guys welcome back to my channel hope you're well inside the year nicely and you have your goals set and you're ready to go and work on them uh if you want me i have a drink that i usually take to detox um i have kombucha if all of you don't know what kombucha is it's like a, a fermented tea that helps digestion so i usually mix mine with grapefruit ice if you find it too bitter you can add a bit of um, stevia drops so that's my drink. We all know that during the Christmas we indulge, let me, say, let me speak for myself, I overindulge, have too much of alcohol, too much of food, so it's time to detox. So today I'd like to talk about uh, parenting in blended families, um, specifically co-parenting and parallel parenting. I know maybe you guys uh, have not had those terms, but these are the two different types of parenting when it comes to blended families. Uh, it's very important for both parents to be actively involved in parenting the children because uh, it creates a, an environment where the children can see that their parents are interested in, the, in their lives and it helps the children adjust better when it comes to divorce. So I would, I would encourage whenever there's a separation or a divorce that both parents to try and be actively involved in the child's life. So that's where co-parenting and parallel parenting comes in. So parallel parenting, which I'd say is what I, I do with my stepchildren, is where there is um, high conflict between the parents. You see in the beginning of the divorce separation, there's really high conflict. So where the parents can't sit in a civil and respectful manner or communicate in a civil manner when it comes to the children's issues. So what you tend to do is uh, to parent parallel, meaning that um, when the child comes to the dad, they follow the rules in that house. When the parent goes to the mom, they follow the rules in that house. And that's what most families experience in the beginning of the divorce. Because during that time, there's very high conflict between the, the two parties. So the parents are not able to sit and communicate in a civil manner, respectful manner, because there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of disappointment, and so there's too much tension. So what happens is, the, each parent has their own rules in their own house. So when the child goes to the mom, their rules are to be followed. When the child goes to the dad, their rules are to be followed. So what usually happens is where now the parents will communicate maybe through the court, through the court orders where they are able to write down the children's schedules, the children uh, visit, visitation rights. Uh, normally, the parents don't communicate very often and everything is written down so that to minimize the communication and the conflict that is going to arise if the two parties meet. So what usually happens, the lawyer will sit down and they'll agree on visitation rights. When do you pick up the child? When do you drop the child? Where? Uh, where is the call monitor? Because sometimes both parties are not to go to the other person's house. They'll write down the schedules, they write down uh, if you're the one staying with the child for the week, how was their mood? How was uh, their eating habits, their sleeping habits? So it's usually done through writing because there is no much um, civil communication between the parents. And then usually what you do, you avoid, the discussion is really just around the children, specifically the children. So it is respectful, but sort of business-like. Um, because at that moment, uh, you want to minimize the interaction between the parents, so to reduce the conflicts, because you don't want the child to see that, to sense that. So that's why you do it. But you see, parallel parenting is not necessarily bad. In the beginning, it can be a foundation for co-parenting. Because after a while, after a few years, both parties there's in, in both parties there's acceptance, so then the tension dies down, uh, emotions are stabilized. So as years go by, you can move from parallel parenting to co-parenting, where now both parties can sit down and talk about the child, put the child's interest first, without having to have too many emotions involved. So I'd say for any person who finds themselves in a situation like that, please, please let's avoid having to put the children in between. Where there's this thing where parents tend to make children messengers, where you tend to find out from the children, oh, is mom dating, is dad dating? Please let's avoid putting the children in between. It's already very hard for them. Like in my case, when I came into the picture and um, I found the burden of parenting lying solely with me because you know the dad is busy at work and uh, the mom is not very present in their lives. I had to find a way of parenting them and trying to put rules and guidelines on my own. So what worked for me was 
uh, I had rules in the house. I remember I even wrote them down and put them on the stairs. Simple rules like, you know, uh, clean up after yourself. Um, when you eat, remove the plate from the table. Be kind to the helpers and the people around us. Uh, clean your innerwear. Tidy up your room. Uh, we came up with schedules like we know, like come from school at this time, do your homework, TV time, and stuff like that. So what I do whenever they go like to their mom's house, I'd try to reinforce the same by maybe um, writing something I note down and making sure they go with you to the mom's house. But at least she can try to reinforce the same on that side. Sometimes they'll follow, sometimes you know, and it was very frustrating when they'd come back and I'd have to start from scratch, like. They go there for a week or two and because you know when they are young they require a lot of uh, follow-up and so maybe when they go to their mom's side there is no much follow-up so i'd have to start from scratch they'll come back they don't have a routine they've forgotten and i know for a step mom or a step that is very frustrating and you wonder why do you have to keep doing this what's the point so i'd sit down and ask myself if it was my child would i want them to grow up without structure without direction so you know as much as you want to give up i tell every parent don't every step I want to do that. Keep pushing, keep um, trying to implement a structure and, and guidelines in the house. Uh, if there, there's too much tension among the, the, the people involved, like the separate and the biological parents, sometimes it's advisable to bring a third party who's neutral to, to the meetings and mission and neutral place and try to agree on uh, the major decision, like which school do they go to which church to go to, or in terms of uh, uh, if there's any medical emergency and stuff like that. Bring in a third party's neutral health. But we need to always remember that children require to have both their parents around them. It's important for them. And I feel like the parents should be actively involved in the child's development and growth. It's very, very important. So let's try as much as we can to put our egos aside to put our interests aside and to put the children's ahead because they're the ones who get mostly affected in this kind of scenario. I know it's not easy, but it's not an easy task, but uh, if you are dedicated and you really want the best for the children, you try and put your issues aside. Most of you will uh, will send me questions and also will DM and ask me questions like, how did I get to a place where I would discipline the children? It didn't happen overnight. In the beginning, it was the dad who used to do the disciplining. But as I continue to stay with the children and I continue to be consistent, the children were able to trust me and see that I have their best interest at heart. So it took maybe a year or two before I started to direct discipline them. And now I can say I'm like the disciplinarian, because the lack of a better word. So when you come in, please be patient. The step parent, try and be patient. You just can't come in and say, these are my rules, follow this, and this is what I'd like to do. Also take into consideration what was their life before you came in. Because like you might enter into a family where uh, maybe the children are still young and they were not taught how to, uh, for example, uh, clean up themselves, or they were not taught to tidy up their rooms. Or maybe for them, uh, sleeping on time was not a big deal, or healthy eating was not a must in the house. So don't come and try and enforce your rules at once. You have to be patient. You have to take your time. You have to discuss it with the children and the, and all the parties involved. So that's one thing you have to put in mind. Another thing is, as the children go older, the tactics and the dynamics of discipline change because the way you discipline a five-year-old is the same way you discipline a teenager or a preteen. So that's something I'll talk about as we continue. Uh, to wrap it up all up, I'd like to talk about the benefits of co-parenting and parallel parenting. It's very beneficial for the child to see that both parents are actively involved in their lives. It leads to a child who feels secure, who knows they're loved even if their parents have separated, who, who then ends up having a high self-esteem. Children also learn to problem, to problem solve. We don't really have to agree, but we can agree to disagree and put the children's needs first. The children also learn how to have better communication skills. Uh, they also understand that you can be respectful in your arguments and you can uh, learn to compromise for the sake of others. Uh, what I've seen with my children over the years is that they have learned 
how to adjust in terms of they know when I go to, like when they come to me, this is what is important in mom's house, you know, like mom appreciates when you tidy up after yourself, when you are clean, when you are kind, you know, what are the values that are most important in this house. When they go to their mom's house, they know, okay, this is what mom values, this is what I need to do. So they, it helps them adjust in that situation. So parents also, and the, uh, the step parents and everyone who's involved need to understand that the children need to feel accommodated, they need to feel their concerns are considered. And also, it would be very nice if we learned to be civil around one another. For example, um, if I'm dropping off the child, let's say our drop off point is a uh, Olympia at Parkland. Uh, try to be cordial to one another. We don't have to be best of friends, you know. As you drop the child, let's say if I'm dropping the child to the to the mom, I'd be like, uh, "Good afternoon, hope you're well." And uh, here's the child. Have a lovely afternoon. You know, just try to be cordial and civil, so the children can also sense that we are both trying you know try to avoid fighting uh exposing the children to negative messages t involving them in issues that they shouldn't be involved in so basically that's it uh feel free to ask any questions uh advice on, on parenting and disciplining which i'm sure is not the last video i'll be talking more about it so as i wind up today's video i'd like to share the date for the next support group meeting uh, like i promised in 2019 i'll have uh, more intimate discussions conversations and an, an ongoing support group for the families so set the date for the first one it's the second of february i'll be sharing more details on a post that will be out soon we'll be having support groups let's say once every month or once uh, every two months just for us to share to support one another uh, to form that community where you're able to come and meet other people who are walking the same journey who when you share with them they can relate with you with you on the issues you're dealing with so i can't wait to see you guys i can't wait for you guys to sign up and to have that one-on-one -on -one more intimate um, discussions on the challenges we face and the joys of blended families so until next time Bye-bye.